Good morning. There were a couple of bears in the area. We heard people banging pots and pans, and that means that they were pretty close. Bears are definitely, you know, a part of this adventure, and I'm sure that will continue as I head further north. I took the ferry across to Victoria yesterday morning, and then drove about 50 or 60 miles up the west coast to Port Renfrew. So I didn't try to find a place to camp down by the water last night because I got in kind of late. To be honest, I was really, really tired and I just kind of took the first thing available in the forest. But right down here, there are a lot of campsites by the water. But look at this view. Wow, this is really cool. This just makes my desert heart sing. I can smell the salt water, all the driftwood here. Really looking forward to some oceanside camping and building a driftwood fire on this trip. That should happen pretty soon as I head further north, kind of get up into some of the less populated areas of Vancouver Island. Well, there you go. Just a quick glimpse of the ocean. And now I'm gonna go finish packing up, get back on the motorcycle. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Port Renfrew and I'm just walking out on the end of the pier here to have a look around. I think I can see the, the beach across the way where I camped last night, but there's uh, docks here and uh, a fishing boat or two and just people walking around. Behind me is the pub and the restaurant. And I'm gonna go up here and get back on the road and go over to one of the cafes that I saw along the way. Looks like the Coastal Kitchen Cafe. So these guys are doing it the real way. They're riding bicycles, kind of on the same roads that I'm riding on, but with pedal power. But I don't get the exercise either. Beach Camp Coffee, what do you recommend I get? What do you like? I like lattes and cappuccinos. Cappuccino it is. We are all gassed up and I'm gonna go try to take a back road to where I'm going today. We're not gonna have cell phone service where we're going, so we'll see how this works. Forgot to get water before I left town this morning, but that's not a problem because there's so much water here that I have a water filter with me. So I'm just gonna fill up my water container so I at least have some drinking water for the rest of this trip. Wow, this is thick and steep. Hopefully we won't see any bears. I don't know if I'm gonna make it down to the river. This is so thick, man. If I saw a bear in here, I would have no chance. I can't even really get down to the river. It would be a lot of work. And it just seems like the kind of place where I would get ticks or bears or something like that. So I'm going to just carry on down the road and look for uh, an easier place with some stream access to fill up my water. One minute ago, this water was in the lake. About 10 seconds from now, it's going to be in my stomach. And I found another use for my pole. It's kind of holding up this water thing right now. Mm. Straight out of the lake. What's your name? Yo, I'm Dylan Davis from Victoria, Vancouver Island. And you have quite the street riding background, but this is kind of new for you, huh? Yeah, I came from a sports bike and uh, this is my first adventure bike, KTM 890. And it's amazing. I love every everything about it. My mirror just broke. Well, that's good. You got stuff that you can fix broken things along the way. Yes, yes. In my opinion, you're not dropping the bike. You're not learning. I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll carry on. 
Yes, thank you. Now I'm going to continue on this dirt road out to Bamfield. This is exactly what I was looking for the last few days. have been pretty tough on me going through the urban congestion of the greater Puget Sound area and then customs and immigration into Canada and getting through Victoria. I feel like it's been three days of kind of stress, traffic and a lot of people and expenses and just, you know, all of that stuff that I try to avoid on a trip like this, but sometimes it's necessary. And sometimes cities are like black holes, I feel. The closer you get to them, the more power they exert and try to suck you in. Their gravitational pull can be very strong. And once that happens, then you end up finding all kinds of other excuses for things that you want to do or feel like you need to do when you're in the city. I try to just avoid big cities altogether, but that means really being prepared and having everything taken care of that I need to have taken care of. Hopefully that's the case now as I head further up Vancouver Island because it's only going to be getting more and more remote. I saw a sign a little ways back that said there was a cafe and a store out this direction, so I thought I would check it out maybe grab a bite to eat for lunch beautiful location there's people out there kite sailing so far I've went 60 miles today super friendly town they're really friendly in the the little store right here I just saw this car drive by and shoot off some fireworks show me it this one's a whistler ah. it didn't work these ones are the, the bangers right right didn't seem to work though, right? Didn't seem to work he's, though, because he keeps scared. coming back. Yeah, yeah. That's actually the third bear encounter that I've had in the last two days. I saw one driving through Olympic National Park and a lot of people were pulled over on the side of the road taking pictures of it. And then last night in the campground, people started making noise and yelling and banging their pots and pans because there was a bear in the campground. And then now this one right here. So bears are very present so far on this trip and I've only been on the island for a day. Well, this seems like a good opportunity to get the GoPro out. So here we go. Let's see what this steep and winding road down to Banfield looks like. I know very little about what I'll encounter out here or where I'll spend the evening, but I do believe that the center of town is across the water and you have to take a water taxi to get over there. Okay, here's the sign that says, Welcome to Bamfield. Tourist Info Center in East Bamfield is to the right, and West Bamfield is to the left. No road access. There's a market, cafe, liquor, groceries. This road should lead out to a campground. Hi. Hey. Where's the... Campground? Yeah. You gotta go back out. Ah. To the main road? Main road. Oh. Right. And then there, there's a new road that comes to the campground. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. Uh, uh. And generally speaking, I like to wear my motorcycle gear when I'm setting up my tent because my pants are already dirty. I've got my boots on. I like to get the dirty work done before I change into something that I'll lounge around in in the campsite. Motorcycle travel and camping is one of the hardest things that I know of when it comes to gear in terms of how much your gear gets abused and worn out just by use, just by normal use, just carrying it, transporting it, using it on the motorcycle. It's tough on gear. It's tough on riding gear. It's tough on boots. It's tough on clothing. It's tough on all of your camping gear. That said, you can still find some really good pieces of gear that you can use for years and years and years like this air mattress. Thank you Thermarest for sponsoring me with this air mattress 10 years ago. How do you like that? 25 lungfuls of air. That's how much it takes to fill up this air mattress. I know this from a lot of experience. <laughs> I decided just to brew a cup of tea, take a walk out to the ocean. I realized that I hadn't even walked out to the ocean, which was kind of the whole reason that I came here. I don't want to be in a rush. I don't want to be in a hurry. I really need to give myself the gift of time. 
to notice the, the subtle details of the world. Right now I'm just barely getting into my Vancouver Island experience and I, I already feel like this is a, such a beautiful and magical part of the world that I could very likely spend the next couple of weeks just filming right here on the island. So that's just kind of an update of where I'm at right now in this project and what I've been going through and some of my thoughts and feelings. I think I'm gonna spend a little bit more time trying to really craft some beautiful images, but I also want them to be very authentic to the journey. This isn't about trying to make something look beautiful that isn't. It's about really truly having a beautiful experience and capturing that and sharing that with you guys. So thanks for sticking with me so far. We still have a ways to go. I've got almost three weeks of riding left. Like I said, I just want to slow the pace down and really be able to participate in the world around me and share that with you in a, in a very compelling way. And so we'll see how far I make it. Thanks for sticking around guys, and we'll see you down the road.